TV dramas like NCIS and Blue Blood show case after case solved with DNA evidence. But in real life, justice is often slow and sometimes elusive. That's especially difficult for assault survivors who choose to report. Tonight, CBS 17's Colleen Quigley digging deeper into a victim's search for justice and the challenges investigators face. It was someone that I um, considered a good friend. In April 2017, a neighbor attacked Andrea Cooper. When my roommates told me to just look at myself in the mirror and see that I had a big mark across my face and um, my neck was already starting to bruise from being strangled. Initially unsure what to do, she reported the sex crime to Raleigh police. It was kind of a thing of if he could do that to you, someone he knows. Just imagine what it could be like for someone else that he doesn't know. That night began a two-year journey for justice. But some survivors are still waiting for answers. According to records we obtained from the Raleigh Police Department, 153 rapes or sexual assaults were reported in 2018. Police made an arrest in only 19 of those cases. Investigators are still working to solve 91 of them, while 43 were investigated and closed without an arrest. We asked RPD why, and they said there were several reasons. Sometimes the victim decides not to pursue the case, and sometimes there's not enough evidence to present to a prosecutor. We come back into court. David Kellner spent 27 years with the NYPD. The look on someone's face just tells you right away. Their body language, the whole night, it, it's like, this absolutely happened. Let's get investigating it. Having worked with the Special Victims Division, he says investigating assault cases isn't as cut and dry as it appears on those TV dramas. We kind of try to walk the path of the victim from where she might have left the house, left the restaurant, left the store, to the crime scene where it ended up, and constantly looking around to see if there's cameras. He says it can sometimes take years to gather enough evidence to make an arrest, and even then jurors expect video and DNA. It's like, what do you mean you don't have DNA? Every case has DNA. Every time I watch SVU, they have DNA, and it's like, it doesn't always happen. More than two years after the assault, Andrea's case went to trial. When it was over and the verdict came back, how did you feel? Um, that was really hard. I knew losing the case was a possibility and I didn't fully. They found him guilty of assault by strangulation. The case ended in a mistrial for the rape and assault charges. Ultimately, Andrea's attacker pleaded guilty to sexual battery. He is on the registry now. And I mean, that was really my main end goal. I wanted him to be on this sex offender registry so that it would hopefully prevent it from happening to someone else. I did eventually get some justice in that sense. That's Colleen Quigley reporting. If you or someone you know has been the victim of an assault and is looking for help, we've included information for Interact. That's Wake County service provider for victims of domestic and sexual violence. You can find this story on CBS17.com. The link is also in there.